So we are on page four. So now with this page, remember this is on the accordion. So this is the outer accordion piece right here. Here's the piece with the, the pocket here and here's the center panel right here. So we're gonna be working on this piece. So it's right behind this page that we just finished, fold it over. We're working on this page. I'm going to pull it out so it's nice and flat and I can work on it. So what we're going to do with this page, since I have messed up multiple times with this paper, I am left with just kind of like bigger scraps. So I don't have enough paper to cover this whole sheet, but sometimes not having the right amount of paper makes you do something that actually looks better. So what I did is with this big scrap, I measured here to here. I fit it, you know, always, I'm not gonna give you measurements because your measurements may not be the same as mine, depending on how you fold, you know, the, the accordion was folded. So just measure it or dry fit it and mark it with a, a pencil. I got this piece here. So that was a big piece I had. And I had a skinny piece. And this skinny piece, let me measure this for you. This is actually one and almost a quarter inch. This one is almost four and almost a half, a little over four and a quarter. So a little over four and a quarter. And this is about one and a quarter down here. So that is what I had left out of this paper. And then I went to our green sparkle paper that we have. I got this at Joann's. And you'll be using this paper again. And I put it in there. And so we kind of just did some blocking here. And that looks really nice. Don't you think that looks nice? That just breaks up the paper. It looks so much better like that. I actually like it. So what we're going to do on here, we are not going to be using a four by six open flap like we made in the build. You can save that or put it in somewhere else. But for this folio, we're not going to be using that. What we're going to be doing is you are going to be going to your 12 by 12 sheet of cut, cut aparts and you've already cut all these out and you're going to get this large Christmas um, card. What you're going to do is you are going to fussy cut it. You're going to just fussy cut it all the way around. You can tell I didn't do a great job. I got my scissors trying to go. There's only a few corners here and I, I'm not a good fussy cutter. So what I did is I got my, my black soot and my little makeup um, foam pad, put it in the black soot and went around my corners to just kind of hide all my mistakes in here. It doesn't look too bad. And then I'm going to ink this with vintage photo. We're going to make a frame here. Behind our frame, we're going to be using this piece. This is from the 12 by 12. It's the, the cover with Santa, big Santa here, stripes, and we're going to be putting a frame right here. And you are going to be fussy cutting again using this paper. You should have three sheets of these. I've gone through them, so I don't even, I have a few left. But fussy cut this little Santa. You're going to be fussy cutting this little, oops, can't see it, this little Santa. So I'm just fussy cutting his toys and his little horse, like that. And then I kind of put some black cardstock on the back just to firm it up. If you know how to put black cardstock and fussy cut with the black cardstock, go for it. I, I tried it and I messed it up. And then I got my black soot 
inked all those edges with black soot to hide all my really bad fussy cutting. So what we're going to have here when we get it all down, here's this. This is going to be our frame. And then we're going to put Santa down here someplace. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do Santa yet. Um, but that's what we're going to be doing on this page. So to get started, if you want to do like me, just cut this piece out about whatever I said. Um, the width is going to be whatever the width of this piece is for you. For me, it was like five and three quarters, but you measure yours. And then the depth is almost five, a four and a half, four and a half. So do that. This little strip here is about three quarters of an inch, not quite three quarters of an inch. Doesn't really matter. You can cut, put this piece down, cut whatever you want down here as your little strip and then you just figure out what size you need to put down here. Have a little bit of black showing in between these three pieces and make sure you ink all the edges of the designer paper. Don't need to ink this guy. So I'm going to do that. I've already inked it. I'm going to apply my score tape and I'm going to put this down and I'll be right back. So I'm work. This is down. This is down. It's not perfect. I can see I didn't. I cut too much black here. I'm not going to worry about it because we're going to be putting a big frame down here. Probably won't really notice it. But uh, anyway, so if you fussy cut, I've already fussy cut this out and kind of inked the inside with your black soot with your. However you do it, you know, I use the, the makeup little foam to get in those corners. And then go ahead and ink the outside with the vintage photo all the way around. I think I've, I think I've already done that. The next thing I want to do, get that there. I want to apply, I've already applied just one layer of 65 pound cardstock just to give this frame some strength, but I want to lift it up a little bit so I can be slipping my um, photo behind it with no problems. What I'm going to do, I have 100 pound cardstock black and I just cut quarter inch strips. I'm going to glue them together I've already glued two together here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply them to the sides of this frame. So one on this side and one on this side. Don't think I need to do one on the top or the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and apply my stacked 100 pound card stock quarter inch pieces on my cutout frame and I'll be right back. And then what we're going to do after that frame is, is finished, we're going to be getting this piece. Now this piece is going to be where the frame is going over. So this is going to be affixed to the paper itself. So what I'm going to do is I don't know if I want it right smack dab in the middle because I'm going to be having Santa over here. If I want Santa, do I want Santa if I have Santa over here? Or should I move this over a little bit to have give Santa space? More like this. Do I want Santa here? I think I'm going to put it about right here. So I am going to affix my green little photo mat. I'm going to affix this straight on to 
the paper, the dotted paper, and I'll be right back once that is down. So now I'm, I've, I've attached my, my um, doubled up 100 pound cardstock to make this, this frame a little thicker. I've attached this. Now remember, this is going to be about, it's going to be a little bit smaller, about a quarter inch um, around smaller than your frame. So you don't, it doesn't stick out. So now I'm going to put this about right here and I'm going to hear that. I'm not going to hear it on the top because we are going to have, this is where your photo is going to go and it's going to slide in here. So that's your photo space. So it's a cute little photo space, especially if you have a cute little munchkin to put in there. And so I am going to go ahead and attach it on three sides here and leave the top open so we can load in our photo. So the frame is down, it's attached. We have our little slide in frame for a four by six of your choosing. And then we have our little cutout that we can put and you can kind of arrange that wherever you like it, depending on your photo. Um, so, so I'm probably going to put mine like that. So I think we are done with this page. And we're going to go on to this little pocket page next to the center panel next. Okay, so now we are ready to start working on the two pockets that are flanking our center panel. So you have these two pockets that are flanking your center panel. And what I chose was the 12 by 12, this 12 by 12 paper. And what I did is you can just measure the width that you need from this 12 by 12 paper, cut it lengthwise, and then that that whole strip will be enough paper to do both the inside, this top part of the, the, the pockets. I tried the smaller print from the eight by eight, and I don't know, I'm sure it would work fine too. It just looked busier just with the smaller pattern. So I went with the bigger holly. And then for the pockets, we're going to be using this page from the 8x8 eight eight and cutting out here to put these on the pockets. So what I did, and you guys probably know how to do this better than me, or you've done it some other way, is I measured you know, the width here, and then... I went down, doo -doo. I want it to get it to go down into my pocket about three quarters of an inch. So what I did is I put, I put a little tick mark here, a quarter of an inch in on this side and a quarter of an inch in on this side and then three quarters of an inch here and here. That's how far I wanted it to go into the pocket. So then what you do is you just cut from here to here. I drew a line because I cannot cut straight. I drew a line from this tick mark to this tick mark, this tick mark to this tick mark, and I just made me a line going all the way across so I know that is where the center is. So when I put it in here, I'll be okay. So let's see if I can even do that. So let me get my scissors. And now you should be able to, I can't see this, I need some white on the back of this. Get this. You should
should be able to slide this in your pocket like that. So now you're able to slide it in your pocket and then all you have to do is figure out where you want to cut for the top. So that's what I'm going to do with these. And I've already done cut this one on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one for the, the, the proper height. And then I'm going to put my score tape. So I've inked my edges. Here's my line, Just that's just for me. You can always erase that, it's just with pencil. So when I put on my tape, some of you may be, just be using um, liquid adhesive. I put my tape on where um, you've angled this edge right here. So when it just slips right in, you don't need any tape inside the pocket. That does, you don't need any tape down and through here. So you would just slip this in get it centered where you want it, and then you would just get your hook tool, reach in there, and pull out your tape. So that's what I'm going to do. So with these little <clears throat> pocket covers, make sure you get the, the edges inked. Try to pick out something that you want to see on your pocket. I was going for toys and jingle bells, and but I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight. So I just wanted to have something that I would enjoy reading. Here I put joy, and I like this little um, figure with these little toys and stockings. So when you, then you're just going to ink it and adhere it down on both sides. And that's what I'm going to do, and I'll be right back. So we have our two side pockets in. Now we're working on the center flap. So what I'm going to do, I got the candy cane here. This piece is, let's see how, this is about one and a half inches this way. This is three quarters of an inch. And then I will just have to cut this to whatever size it needs to be for the remainder of the pocket. Now with the pocket too, I did round my corners here. So you can do that too. So what I'm going to do is figure out the length I need to cover this and then our pocket will look something, I mean this, this flap will look something like this, which I think actually looks so much better than just the plain green. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all my measurements for this one. I'm going to ink all my edges and then I'm going to put on my score tape around the corners down here also on the pattern paper and then I'll be right back. So here is how the center flap came out once I finished doing everything. Here's a piece from the chipboard that we're probably going to use down here. Um, probably going to be putting a magnet behind here. Now my original thought when I was trying to design this was to put this 4x6, almost 4x6, card from the 12 by 12 collection here. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but it's an option. Um, so I've already inked the edges and it's ready to go. I'll put it in my little stash of 12 by 12 cut aparts. And depending on what else we do, I may go ahead and put that there. Or I may just leave it like this. That Sometimes less is better, and that actually looks really cute. So it depends what goes on the pocket here, and we'll see. But for now, that is an option. 
we're going to go on to the inside of the flap next. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the inside of the center flap. So we are going to put a magnet. So get the magnet that came with your kit, put some score tape over it, and then get the other magnet so it sticks to it, and put score tape underneath it. Oops, make sure I burnish this one down. So it does stick, the bottom one. And now let's place the bottom magnet. So that's where our magnet's going to go down here. So now we are going to got our magnets in place, that magnet in place. Now we're going to decorate this inner middle flap. So the paper I chose was this from the 12 by 12. So you're going to get this from the 12 by 12, this this pattern. I'm going to put I rounded the edges here because we did round the edges, remember, of the flap. So I rounded the edges. You're going to be measuring it, obviously, from side to side. The other thing we're going to be doing is taking this green paper that we got from scrap paper 12 by 12 from Joann's. And it's an American Crafts. Can't see it. This is which one it is. And this was only like, I don't know, 60, 70 cents. I mean, it wasn't that expensive. It was on sale. You're only gonna need one sheet. Or you can get any kind of green. I just like the green sparkling paper. And I cut this in a, this round sparkly shape. I use nesting round dies. So I have two sets, the ones with the stitching and the regular ones that aren't stitched. I don't remember where I got these, but they're easy to find. And what I did is I just got one of these stitched ones and cut out this circle that is approximately it's a four inch diameter circle. So let me get those out of the way. And then you're going to cut that out. You're going to get this from the eight by eight, this paper. And you are going to be using this next smaller down, smaller down, the next smaller um, die, round die, and we're, you're going to punch this out. Or if you have, you know, you can cut it out too. If you don't have these dies, you can just trace some circles and cut them out. We're going to be putting that down here. So that's going to give us this part here. So you're just making a circle out of this. And then you're going to be cutting out two of these clock images, the big one and a little one. You could either cut it out or use a circle punch if you got the right size to just pop them out. And that's what I did. And I put them on red cardstock. So here's my, this one. And then here's this one. And then I just, yeah, I just use my circle die to put um, the next size bigger from the image to make my red little outline frame. So I have two of these. I've inked them. I haven't glued them down yet. And I thought these kind of looked nice somewhere around here. I'm not sure I got to play around with it like that. Um, maybe a little farther up. Let's see, play around with it. 
not sure where, where I'm going to put it, maybe like that. But the other thing, when I was doing this, I thought it needs something else. I want a, a good separation from this center panel. So I cut out, this is from the 8x8. Eight eight. I cut out this little strip, and it's 3 quarters of an inch wide. And I, I'm going to be putting this down here. Put this over over it kind of like this and I just thought that looked better you don't have to put this strip down if you like it the way it was I just like this little strip and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this down once I get it inked put this down and then I'm going to have to, I'm, I want a little black border here, a little tiny black border. So I'm going to have to make this a little bit um, shorter because right now it's too long. But I'm going to get that cut, paste these two down, and then I'm going to adhere my circle and put that somewhere around here and get these centered up. So I'll be back once I get it all lined up and placed. So I got this placed down. I want to give you some measurements. So this piece up here, if you decide to do some of this blocking, it's four plus, oh, about two ticks. Uh, it's yeah, basically four and two ticks. And then this little guy here is, he's three quarters of an inch wide. I left a little black space in between them. I think that looks really nice. So this is really, really pretty. So that's all matted down. Uh, my circle that was up here, I glued it down because it, it was too hard with score, ta uh, score tape and it kind of wrinkled a little bit so now I have it sitting underneath my heavy anatomy books I teach anatomy so it's gonna flatten it out and we'll get back to that a little bit later so now we're gonna do the inside pocket so the inside pocket we're gonna be using this from the 8x8 this paper same thing like we did last time I like to just you know go up about three quarters of an inch um, quarter of an inch here inside and then measure up three quarters of an inch tall and then just cut it on both sides so we put our score tape at least if you're using score tape you stop right at that that um, edge where the tape ring starts in so when I put this in it's going to fit in that pocket like that just slides right in and then I pull my top tape out and then I reach in with my hook tool and pull those two out. So that's what I'm going to do. And I also like to kind of choose what you want to be up here. So I wanted it to say Merry Christmas, so I made sure that was in there. Mistletoe, stockings, joy, candy cane. So this was just like cut. So. The words here are nice to read. So you can do that too if you like. And, and then I'll be back once I get this in. Okay, I've been struggling with this bottom pocket trying to figure out what to do. So originally I was going to put this candy stripe. I thought, well, this candy stripe looks good because it's picking up the candy stripe here. But I did not like this candy stripe in here. I mean, it, you may like it, maybe not, but I thought this part up here, I glued this all down, and it's kind of elegant looking to me, more so than the other stuff. And the candy stripe just did not seem to be working with this guy 
it works fine with this page. So I had to come up with something else, and I've tried like every, every kind of paper. That's why I waste so much paper, because I cut it and I put it on. I go, I don't like it. So what I finally came up with is I put a, this stripe from this paper. This is the 12 by 12. I just cut out this candy stripe down here, just from you know the little white above and below this little stripe. So I put that down there just so it would give me something to tie in with this. I have to tie it in, and that was the only way I could tie it in. <laughs> What I decided was to go ahead and use this holly paper again that we used up here, put it down here, and that looks okay. That looks okay. It looks elegant again. And then the, the candy stripe is not too crazy. So the candy stripe will work down here and then that, that candy stripe picks up this candy stripe. And then we're gonna be making a little button here. Originally I was gonna use a chipboard piece, but I didn't really like the candy stripe chipboard piece. It just kinda of got too busy. So what I think I'm gonna do, I cut out a little circle with my die, and then uh, this little holly from this paper right here, I just used my circle punch and I think I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to make a little tab right here so this will be our tab to pull up. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that yet but then and it would just show on the back side as a red, oops you can't see it, as a red little circle here. So what I'd like you guys to do if you like this this design you can put if you don't like this design you can put the whatever paper you want but because I wanted to I cut instead of using the big um, 12 by 12 cut apart for this I went to the smaller the 8 by 8 and got this smaller one and I thought this actually looks kind of good there I don't know yet I still haven't decided whether I'm going to put it down it depends once I get my little tab pole and everything. So that's another option I'm gonna keep in the back of my mind. And But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure you guys got this done. And then I'm going to go ahead and affix this. Make sure you have a, some black edging at the pocket and some black edging in between this stripe. I've already glued down my stripe and this piece. So just do your measurements to get a little bit of black space in there and that just makes it look a little bit more elegant I think. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Well so we're finished with the center spread. What I think I'm going to end up doing you can either leave that just plain like this. We, we do need to add some kind of um, little tag to open it. What I probably am gonna be using is cut out a couple of circle punches, put them together, together, glue them together to give it more strength. And I might even put a 100 pound weight black cardstock um, circle right in the middle just to make it even heavier and then glue that down here. I think that would look nice and when you open it up with the black with the red on that side you're just going to see this little red peeking out over here. So that I'm thinking of doing that and I most likely will do that just not right now. And with this little card, I cut out, I cut it all the way to the red, ink the edges, and I think I'm going to put it like that. I think that looks 
pretty darn cute. But I'm going to save those and probably put those on later. So now we're going to go on to our next page. So we finished the center part. We have this next page, which has these two pockets. 